the topic is the general, uh, some general features about language context uh, of the Nenets languages spoken in northwestern Siberia. Uh, this map does not show the entire Tanga Nenets language area, which is huge. It extends to the further to the west here. Uh, here is the forest Nenets uh, language area. Uh, here we have the Urals. Uh, here we have Oak River, Tennessee River. There. Uh, the red lines uh, are supposed to show the current distribution of the languages in question, while the dotted lines uh, uh, indicate uh, previous, or well, let's say the uh, earliest known uh, uh, geographic distribution uh, of the next languages. As you can see, the languages have receded in southern regions. However, the other language language actually has been expansive in, 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 even in, in recent uh, uh, of centuries in the east. Uh, very uh, number of speakers over there. The literacy point here is that uh, until recently, forest that it was not report, recognized at all, and even now it's recognized. Uh, let's say, un in an unsatisfactory manner. Uh, this map is supposed to uh, complement the previous uh, map because here you can see the westernmost region of the... Uh, the western dialects of Tartarus are spoken uh, between the White Sea and the Petra River, and then the central dialects between the Petra River and the Ural Mountains, together jointly, they may be called the European uh, dialects, uh, the main uh, phonological uh, differences between dialects actually uh, occur between Western and Central uh, dialects. However, uh, lexical differences, which are largely uh, connected with uh, loanwords, uh, the main isoglosses are found here in the Euros, which uh, is the borderline between Central dialects and Eastern dialects, which is the spoken across this uh, huge uh, territory over here. Uh, the uh, abbreviations here refer to the influence of Lake Tisalo, whose uh, materials still uh, form the cornerstone of, of uh, dialectology as well as lexical studies of the uh, Nenets languages. Here's a more detailed map of the forest Nenets uh, language area. Oh, okay, I would say something important. Uh, Lake Tisalo was able to study over 100 years ago. Uh, dialects and idiolects uh, from areas where Tangalian is, is, is no longer spoken. And this is even more true when we take a look at the uh, forest Nenets language area. So actually, uh, these dialects are now extinct, but they are very well covered in uh, Lake uh, publications. Here we can talk in forest Nenets, we can talk about Western dialects in here and Eastern dialects uh, over there. These are just a few examples of the differences between the various languages. Uh, however, if you don't want to, useful if you want to have some sort of small talk in the languages at some point. Uh, however, we shall now focus on the fourth example, uh, which is here. How do you say it's raining in the languages? A uh, little technical point here, the little dot on half la, it is raining. Uh, it's a local schwa or the syllabistic marker. Whenever you see that, it means that there is an extra syllable in the word, in the, in the word form. And that is very crucial uh, for, uh, for the phonology of both Nenets languages. However, my point here is, uh, even uh, Nikolaios, uh, grammar, which is excellent in the name was, there are some problems. You should read uh, uh, Ivan Sterin's excellent review in Poplosi Yosipas Manner uh, when studying it. But she goes on and uh, claiming that this kind of saying uh, that uh, rain goes would be a calc of, of Russian uh, construction and confine the younger speakers. This is not the case. So it is uh, a misunderstanding. Uh, it is just an, 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 uh, the old verb for rain was simply lost in Tundra Nenets, uh, and this new construction was created independently, but it's, it's, it, it's, uh, it emerged much
much before there were any serious contacts with the Russians. So, yeah, this kind of thing. so my point here is that not everything that looks like uh, language contact or, or similarities between contact languages do, do not need to imply an actual language contact. Other features like that would be the system of palatalization in the Nenets languages, which is very similar to Russian in many ways. Uh, so that's all Nenets thing. Yet, uh, it's much older than any, any kind of contact with Russia. Or the system of aspect, uh, verbal aspect, which is all across the seven languages, there's marked similarities to Russian, yet must have emerged independently. Okay, today this is just approximately, it's integrated because obviously the figures don't mean anything, but they are just sort of a guideline. Uh, we are now not concerned with proto-ironic or proto samoyed uh, which have many, we know, uh, many uh, layers of loan words, but we are interested in uh, both proto nenets and the modern uh, nenets languages. Uh, and the interesting point is that proto nenets which I claim was spoken, let's say, something like 1,000 years, apparently had very, very few, if any, uh, language contacts. Uh, I first had here a single question mark, then I added two more to make three, then I resided the seven correct number of question marks there. And much of my presentation could be also called as a quest for proto minutes, low, or, or low words in, the, in, in proto minutes or, or, or something like that. Uh, some, uh, just very quickly, some major points uh, or, or, or general features. So, time duration can be divided from the point of view of language under the three zones, the European zone where Komi and Russian both are more dominant languages and, and the other languages. It may, it's also possible that the West vowel system of the Western dialects was influenced by contacts. I said something <laughs> uh, I said something about that uh, ten days ago in St. Petersburg. Uh, uh, in the lower Op region, which is the area around uh, Saleha, uh, you have uh, widespread and actually traditionally before Russian uh, dominance uh, became uh, uh, so central uh, there were four uh, languages spoken by a large part of, or known at least to some uh, extent by a large portion of the population the languages were Russian, Komi, Tandronenets and uh, Northern Hanti there was something sort of hierarchy between them but many people were at least able to uh, understand uh, these languages. And again, the third zone would be the, the lower Yenisei region where Tundra is sort of ex expansive. It uh, completely absorbed the uh, uh, Urats language, which was closely related but still a distinct language. And now it's going to sort of doing the same thing with the Enets languages, Tundra Enets and, 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 and Forest Enets. Uh, again, it may be said something about the vowel system, but I'm here mainly focusing on loan words. Uh, there is a small number of Russian and Northern and the Lone words that are found uh, throughout the uh, Tundra Nenets uh, area. However, uh, Lone words are the main, major source of, of divergence of Tundra Nenets dialects. In that, on the European side, uh, you have many Russian as well as Komi Lone words. Uh, also, on the European side, you have, you have features such as uh, the word order is free. This is especially true of the Western dialects, but still. Uh, also, at, at some local dialects, uh, the dual number has been lost, and there's a clitic system with this word, this, this kind of clitics are used in these, these dialects, which are unknown uh, uh, in the eastern dialects, which uh, appear to be Komi or Russian, local Russian influence. On the Siberian side, however, there is a large number of northern Hanty local words, much more they have been contacts with other language groups as well. Uh, Tandrenets, although this is not a uh, topic, uh, my topic now, but uh, Tandrenets has been a donor of numerous loan words. A couple of them has, have, that have already or also uh, 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 reached in the, uh, international uh, usage, let's say. The same thing uh, compared with, uh, or the same kind of, <coughs> sorry, uh, the same kind of features. Uh, uh, about uh, forest minutes. Uh, so it's much more endangered than that minutes, well, that's clear. Uh, until recently, the poor dialect, uh, the sort of 
Paul Arnett was preserved relatively well, but just lay only in the 21st century. Now the language shift to Russian has accelerated, and it's really, really fast now. And the thing like code switching was virtually unknown until a decade or two ago. And it's, it's uh, now regularly commented with my, by my uh, forest and uh, <laughs> colleagues. But forest and practically all loan words come from one single language, and that language is Eastern Hunti. So all cultural vocabulary of the language comes uh, either from the language or by the, by the, through the mediation, mediation of Eastern Hunti. A uh, slight difference between dialects, I will say something about that. Uh, this was a topic of another talk that the whole vowel system of the forest language language uh, now follows sort of the, the is, is structured following uh, the Eastern hunting model. Uh, it may be that the case system, which is in, in Western dialects of uh, forest language, which is uh, impoverished, you can say, uh, is, is also more similar to Eastern hunting. Russian loan words in the poor dialect, in, uh, in, 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 in particular, did really not exist until just, again, just a couple of decades, decades ago. So it's language is spoken somehow in the geographic, not so far from the geographic center of the Russian Federation, and yet it used to be until, until now a language that with, with no Russian influences at all, almost. Uh, okay, and again, this is just the original language and the neighboring languages. Uh, it's kind of the dead end of language contacts. Because, I mean, they have absorbed, mostly, most influences come from here. Uh, there are people living in the uh, neighborhood of Northern Hunti and Northern Selbuk, but their contacts seem to sort of egalitarian. There is no need to, uh, for their own words, because they are culturally very similar and so forth. I will say something about the influences again. These are just a uh, few random examples. I'm not going to do any details. But you can recognize the uh, words that will everybody recognize why alcohol would be sharka. This is clear to everybody in the room. Char no, Char it's not clear to everybody, okay. Yeah, that, that, those who speak Russian <laughs> as a Charka is some sort of a schnapps last note. It's absolute. Sorry? It's absolute word in Russian. Which word? Absolutely. Ah, okay. It's that's an old word for any kind of cup to drink. Yes. Okay, but that's my <laughs> word. Okay. Obsolete was why I asked. <laughs> that is it. Okay. Bina looks like a, a Russian word, word no. but it actually can be shown that it did enter at Eastern Hunting and was then borrowed from there uh, for his minutes. <laughs> and there are cases like this. Here you have just a uh, the participle form a, a, a verbal noun uh, used in Forest as where you have loan words uh, in, 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 in the uh, dialects of Tangonets. Uh, so the different in, uh, loan word influence is a major factor in the development of the two Nets languages. Uh, and perhaps even more so, uh, uh, it is it's behind, or, or it's, a, it's a major. Uh, factor uh, when we talk about the deep divergence of the dialects of Tundra and Nets. So here on the left column you see uh, a selection of Russian loan words and on the eastern, uh, on the right hand column you have uh, forms, uh, the semantic parallels uh, from uh, the eastern dialects of Tundra uh, Again, similar question, fast point I rarely hear that word in, in casual Russian speech, but baskoi. Kovi. Pardon me? Kovi. That's not Russian, but it's unknown. Ah, okay. Good point. But you are compared to from Basha. Okay. Thank you. That's a good question. But anyhow, we live. Uh, to a lesser extent, uh, long words have contributed to the difference between. Uh, the foreigners dialects, uh, although they are generally, as the language area is so compact, they are also much more unified. But here we have the uh, words for animal names in, in, in uh, Western dialects of foreigners have been uh, borrowed from uh, Eastern Hunting. 
So the question is whether or not there were uh, loan words uh, that arrived in language that we uh, may call uh, proto-nenets. So, and, and I just uh, now go through a couple of examples. Uh, these uh, phonetic transcriptions uh, come from uh, Lehtisos 1956 uh, dictionary. Up there you can see the phonological uh, transcriptions. Uh, now, if you are Nyan and Nyan, well, this is the same Nyan that you get in an uh, Indian or Nepalese uh, restaurant, yeah. obviously. Uh, Nyan is found in the very same form, really, in both Nenets languages. Uh, here, let us know why I, I uh, uh, copied the entries in let us know, because let us know also uh, actually is the only systematic source where you have uh, uh, the uh, origin of, of loan words is, is in indicated. And here we have both Khandi uh, 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 and, and Komi uh, included here. However, if uh, so, it could we presume, could presume that this is a uh, proto nenets word that uh, is around the language uh, early on. Uh, however, uh, if we study the uh, historical phonology of the Nenets languages more uh, uh, exactly, we'll realize that this kind of uh, an, uh, ad hoc or, or let's say uh, presumed uh, reconstruction from proto Nenets uh, word form would have actually uh, yielded the reflex or in foreign language would, would be something different. For this uh, uh, correspondence to occur, we would have to ha have, have uh, uh, geminate uh, nasal in uh, proto -genets. and the donor languages don't give any indication, don't give any reason to assume why we should have that. So the conclusion, if you, if you can follow me, is that this, uh, this word was borrowed parallelly, separately into the Venice languages. It's even possible that it was borrowed separately into uh, European and Siberian and Renets, but simply uh, because the known languages have an identical form. To start with, uh, you get this kind of a sort of illusion of a proto Renets loan word. Another case would be, although here's much more variation, the word for uh, T uh, and uh, here you can see that they has always marked only one uh, variant, Sai, over there, uh, as a handy loan word. While uh, these two, Chai, Chai, have been marked as Russian loan words. This would be a unique case, because here, uh, Russian loan word would be found also in the Ur dialect of uh, forest Nenets. Uh, however, if we take a look at Steinitz uh, data, about uh, the Khanti uh, languages, we can actually see that there are perfectly good uh, uh, original forms uh, in the in Eastern Khanti for these uh, foreigners forms to uh, emerge. So there is no reason to assume anything other than Eastern Khanti origin for this word in, in foreigners again. And, and uh, here, uh, Steinitz, uh, blindly, we can say, follows Lehtisalo. He only mentions this one, although he, uh, uh, in, in retrospect, could have well uh, indicated the hunting origin of, of uh, all forest minutes words in question. Uh, uh, minor question, uh, okay, is about the uh, contacts between the uh, Nenets languages themselves. It has been extremely scarce. You can see that the word like polar bear might be borrowed from Tundra Nets for, uh, let's say, ecological uh, re uh, reasons of, of, of uh, natural uh, geography. Uh, and indeed, the origin of this uh, Tundra Nets form has a regular reflex, which is inherited from Tundra Nets in the meaning maritime, and then it's the same sort of other historical. Uh, etymological uh, doublets, but the uh, word in the meaning of Kola Ben has arrived uh, for um, Tandra Nenets. Okay, I'll skip that. So, just a minor detail. Strangely enough, uh, usually the initial web of Palatal uh, radio line is preserved in 
Boris Menes. Uh, we should expect the form like for the a neuron 10. However, we do have, in actual fact, the uh, which is, is, is uh, corresponds to the tunnel and so here, uh, I should have no other option but to explain it as, 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 as thunder Nenet's influence, as strange as it may seem. Uh, here, basically, we could reconstruct uh, um, proton Nenet's form for the word meaning Russian, uh, which presumably is, 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 is originally from uh, Finnic uh, form. Uh, however, this would seem anachronistic, so I have sort of resolved here the terms like pre thunder Nenets, pre forest Nenets. So it's a very old, old, long word, and there is simply there are no phonological uh, features that would uh, reveal its uh, late arrival in the language, but we just have to assume it on. On, on, on extra linguistic uh, basis. Uh, here's a just very quick. Uh, apparently, the word for cow is borrowed from Tandanenes because we have a sort of an etymological uh, uh, substitution uh, by with M for is Russian Karova. So, uh, however, in Florida we have M, and the form itself looks like. Uh, a, a participle form of a word that means expose. So uh, I don't know the semantic, uh, semantic uh, uh, sort of basis for it. In what way is a coward exposed, a revealed animal? You tell me at some point if you wish to do if you can make it. Is it Okay. There are many other things that have a wide distribution uh, in in across or. Uh, across both Venice languages, but however, when we study the historical phonology, we can actually show quite, quite easily that they have been borrowed separately. This would have been an interesting case of that. Uh, uh, the word for blunt arrow, however, in Forest Venice, it has a much, much uh, wider semantic uh, range. We can, if we want, we can reconstruct it into, uh, into proto Venice. Uh, however, uh, and what's interesting from the point of a language conduct, and it's, it's, it's quite clearly it's, a, it's an Evenki long word. However, uh, Kalimski goes on saying that it's a relatively late, uh, uh, late uh, uh, borrowing. So it just sort of a, it, it, it's, it's presumably borrowed via Tandra Nenets to Forest Nenets and have been sort of, uh, uh, the sound substitutions have been etymological. Another case like that would be the word for uh, seagull, which can be reconstructed in the protonetics and, and probably is a protonetics uh, word. However, here I, I sort of criticize uh, Steinitz in particular, who claims that, okay, uh, he simply criticizes here the idea, but, but uh, on, 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 on weak ground. Okay, this is my final point. So do we did for, for the, okay if uh, uh, if uh, Tandra Menes, uh, if Proto Menes actually had any uh, contact uh, okay but well, uh, here we have talked, uh, maritime mammals in Tandra Menes, there are only three species of seals living in the Kara Sea and the other northern uh, parts of the Arctic Ocean. Walrus is clearly a derivative of the word tooth, which is quite appropriate. Then we have words like wakti uh, and nyak uh, for two other species of seals, and neither of them have any etymology, nor they do have any, any kind of... Uh, in in uh, one local dialect, for instance, we have a word, but it could very well have arrived there from uh, Tandra Nenets. Uh, uh, again, here we have a consonant uh, cluster, which, it, if the word had an, an, uh, uh, inherited from from Pluto uh, it would okay. It, it uh, would have actually been simplified to that. Uh, and and again, and if we compare the names of, of uh, seals in in uh, other northern Samoan languages, we have a very different word. <coughs> So what is my conclusion here? My conclusion here is that, again, it's not about proto I didn't say it right. Uh, 
from letting go. But again, in Tanya Linux, we may have, and quite presumably do have, a uh, layer of loan words from the language of the abor aborigines. So words like maritime uh, mammals could very easily be borrowed from the substrate language, which are known as, as secret uh, term that those of you who have uh, dealt with matters Lenes would know. Okay, I presume my time is up, so very much so. Yeah, thank you so much.